first time coming to the wind tunnel, like my advice to you is like if you want to maximize your time coming to the, you know, like a facility uh, of a wind tunnel or even like a track, you know, like you're going to do an aero test basically. I would always say that you need to get a prefit, you know, and that starts with somebody that understands like aerodynamics and biomechanics because there's, there's always trade offs between like aero and biomechanics to start off with. Strong like a tree. So if you can come here with like a great baseline, then you know that you're gonna maximize your return like when you come to the wind tunnel itself. So if you've done that, then obviously you're gonna make this book into the, you know, you're gonna pick like one of the, the leaders in like aerodynamics. Uh, if not, then you're gonna struggle. <laughs> but yeah, you pick like a leader in like aerodynamics. And then obviously when you arrive at this facility, like the, the key parts I would always say, make sure that you disconnect any electronic components. So like, uh, you know, like your gears, uh, if you're on like mechanical gears, then take all like the cables out because that's just going to mean that you're going to, you're going to maximize like your, your runs. Uh, so then you'll arrive at the facility uh, and then the process then will be that you'll uh, meet who's ever going to take like your aero test and then you'll have, you know, a scenario of different things that you want to test in that you know like between like two and three hours i'd always allow like two to three hours of testing you're never going to maximize but you know like an hour it's just the time's just going to tick away so then you kind of you have like this protocol that you're gonna you're gonna run through then Generally what happens at that point then, uh, you know, like they're probably going to weigh you, they're going to weigh the bike, understand, uh, make sure that the wind tunnel is running correctly. And then you'll, you'll do what they call like a, a baseline setup. And like some people will get you to get into like the, the optimal aero position, but generally you just want to fall into a position that you kind of know that you're going to utilize and you're going to be able to run like consistently. And my top advice when it comes to this is always think about that you've got to relate this onto the, you know, like the outside. So if you're kind of seeing that you can't see, then generally is what's going to happen in the real world is you're going to lift your head quite a lot and the, it's not going to relate to, you know, the position you can sustain. At that point, like generally what will happen then is your bikes will set up, you can do this baseline run and then they'll generally do like a your sweep of the bike and you. From that point then, you'll, you'll go through a series of testing that you want to do. So for like me today, we'll do like this your sweep, we're going to look at, you know, we're going to set the bike up then and we're going to pick a speed. So for me, probably like 50 kph will be here like today and then we'll pick like a set uh, degree of your that we're going to do a consistent uh, number of runs. So for me today is I want to test like stack height, reach. I kind of like I'm in a position where my biomechanics I know what's working now what isn't there's one test that I want to run whereby like I might like drop my saddle height this is a kind of a key one that a lot of people are doing in aero testing but it doesn't translate to kind of uh, being able to sustain like the power because what you've got to realize is that say you I don't know like
got like what we call like this ultra air road position, uh, which you can utilize like when you go downhill or you know, like you build like an aero drill into like your programming. And then the art of all of this is then you can take that into like the real world. Then that'll probably lead into like some clothing tests or if there's like some specific marginal gains that you want to make on your bike, like bottle position or then you, you generally finish the testing off with something like that. So it's just trying to maximize your time. Like your pre-planning is like the key part. Like, cause two hours in the wind tunnel can go like in a number of, it, it just flies by, you know? And if you haven't got the people that are around you that can make changes quickly, then you're gonna run out of time. Cause if you drop a bolt or something's what won't undo and you've got to drill that out, well there's half an hour gone like straight away. So always kind of just make sure that you've kind of, you've pre-thought about like why you're coming here. Like just saying I've got like this cash that I just want to chuck at a wind tunnel test, that's not good enough, you know, like you've got to have a reason why do I want to get faster and more efficient? Uh, and then you'll leave here with, yeah, a number of things that you can bring into like your own training. And then generally from that, you'll get like, uh, you know, like a test sheet of kind of all the things that have worked, what hasn't. Uh, and then obviously like the implementation then is for you to bring that into like your own racing and training. Like if you've got a coach, like generally they'll implement that. That's how like my box performance coaching would run. Uh, that's the, the discretion of whoever you're working with really. I think the biggest thing that everybody gets from a, a good wind tunnel test then is kind of, uh, it's just like a learning process. You go away with a load of information that you can bring in and get better results really. So top tips. The middle.